On today's narrated PowerPoint, we will examine the subject, It All Begins With Saving. Hi, this is Steve Googe. Welcome again to another presentation in Fruitland Baptist Bible College's course entitled, Principles of Christian Finance 102. In today's lesson, you will learn that Scripture encourages regular saving. We will talk about what should we save for, and will answer the question, how much should we save? Another question that's very important is, should a Christian invest? There are certain uses of money that are discouraged in the Bible, and we'll look at two of those in today's narrated PowerPoint. This is a very important lesson. I hope that it will serve you well as you begin to think about the importance of saving, because it all begins with saving. It may surprise you to learn that Scripture actually encourages saving. Proverbs 21, verse 20 reads, The wise man saves for the future, but the foolish man spends whatever he gets. It might also surprise you to realize that savings is only encouraged if one is also giving. Luke 12, 16-21 and verse 34 says this, The ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. He thought to himself, What shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, This is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I'll say to myself, You have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life will be demanded of you. This is how it will be for anyone who stores up things for himself but is not rich toward God. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. When one understands properly this parable that Jesus taught, we see clearly that he's telling us that we ought to save, but only if we simultaneously are giving unto the Lord and his causes. Now, we're also to save regularly. We read in Proverbs 21.5 the following words. Steady plodding brings prosperity. Hasty speculation brings poverty. You do not have to earn a lot of money to save, but you need to learn how to save consistently. Here's a wonderful question for us to answer. How much should we save? Well, in Genesis 41, 34, we read, Let Pharaoh appoint commissioners over the land to take a fifth of the harvest of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. We recognize, of course, that this comes from the lips of Joseph, as he was attempting to help Pharaoh prepare for a, a terrible famine that was coming to the land. What did he do? Well, he saved. And he saved in such a way that there would be an abundance when the seven years of famine came to the land. Realize that you do not have to be a wealthy person to start saving. You just have to, well, start saving. I would encourage you to begin saving 10% of what you earn. Now, if that's too bold a step for you to take, then start where you are and begin saving a smaller percentage than 10, but work up to it. There are several items that are crucial in any savings plan. You should save for unexpected emergencies. You should save for an emergency or rainy day fund. You need an emergency fund of three to six months of your living expenses. That needs to be put in the bank or some other safe place where you can gain access to those funds when an unexpected emergency arises. And believe you me, it will arise. And then you need to save for short-term purchases. That's anything within the next 18 months. 
It might be an appliance. Whatever you might need in the short term, begin saving for it. Many don't plan for these things. Have a budget that plans to meet these needs when they arise. And then save for major purchases. Anything within the next five years. This might be the replacement of your car. Or it could be another larger expense, such as expanding the home. Whatever it is, plan for it. Save for it. Get ready for it. And then the last one on this slide, save for long-term needs. And that would be such things as an educational fund for your children or a retirement account that you will tap into when you decide to stop working and being gainfully employed. I would encourage you also to be sure that you have adequate insurance. We've talked about that on another narrated PowerPoint, but I can't emphasize it enough. Insurance basically is a financial tool that spreads risk over a large number of people and therefore it can pay in the event that you have a catastrophe or a loss. Let's talk about investing for just a few moments. In any investment you need to be sure that you avoid risky investments. Ecclesiastes 5 13 through 16 says this, There is another serious problem I have seen everywhere. Savings are put into risky investments that turn sour and soon there is nothing left to pass on to one's son. The man who speculates is soon back to where he began, with nothing. This is, as I said, a very serious problem, for all his hard work has been for nothing. He has been working for the wind, but it is all swept away. That reading is from the Living Bible. So avoid risky investments. You can lose it all. And then diversify your investment if you're going to invest. Ecclesiastes 11.2 says that we should divide your portion to seven or even to eight, for you do not know what misfortune may occur on the earth. That comes from the New American Standard Bible. Diversifying your investment means that you don't put all of your eggs in one investment. You have many investments and you spread the risk out over the investments. When one investment is high, then you will gain and earn money from it. But if other investments go lower, then you will lose funds. If you have the right diversification in your portfolio, then you spread that risk out over a number of investments and you avoid the highs and the lows of the stock market. Now what about investing in the stock market? Should everyone invest? Well, stocks go up and down. Short-term movement of the stock market, or equities, is impossible to predict. It is a strategy for the long term. What about the business practices of the companies that you're investing in? You should know that. You should also be sure that you know what the fees are that are associated with any stock market trades. Be careful. If you don't have a high risk tolerance about being in the stock market, because the ups and downs can drive you almost insane, because the market will go up, but it will come down as well. So if you don't have a high risk tolerance, then be leery of the stock market. Should everyone invest in the stock market? Not necessarily. There are certain investments to avoid. These may seem like they're common sense, and they really are, but I wanted to mention them anyway. First, avoid get-rich-quick schemes. A man with an evil eye hastens after wealth and does not know what will come upon him. Proverbs 28:22. Also, you should avoid any gambling. Make a commitment never to gamble even for entertainment. We should not expose ourselves to the risk of becoming a compulsive gambler, nor should we support an industry that enslaves so many. 
At the beginning of this PowerPoint presentation, we talked about the fact that it all begins with saving, and it really does. Dr. Keith Reeves uses this illustration to help us understand saving. Take a cup of coffee a college student might purchase at Starbucks. It costs about $5. Instead of spending the $5, if the student will save it and invest it in the stock market, the results might amaze you. Let's apply the rule of 72 that states that if you take the interest rate and divide it into 72, it will help you predict how long it will take the investment to double. For example, if you have 0.5% interest or a half a percent interest, it would take 144 years to double your $5 investment. However, if you take 10% interest, it would take 7.2 years to double your money. Let that $5 remain as an investment. And the rule of 72 tells you that your money would double seven times in approximately 49 years. In other words, about the time the student would have graduated and then be ready for retirement. 49 years after the student graduated from college, the money would have doubled about seven times. The $5 would be worth $600 at that point. That is the blessing of saving and investing. That is the blessing of compound interest. But it all starts with saving.